All right, hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I am Pranav. I come from India. I have studied engineering in my undergrad and about to graduate from SCAD using uh, getting a, a degree in Master of Arts in Industrial Design. So let's jump to where I live currently in Savannah. I live in 501 East 32nd, which is about 25 minutes from Gulfstream. And I walk every day because I like walking. The problem is it's summer right now, right? And the temperature is usually pretty hot. Right now the current outside temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which means I sweat a lot while I, by the time I reach college. And a bigger problem is I don't get any water on the way because I feel dehydrated. I have to carry a bottle of water every time I leave the house. So there's no real option. The nearest uh, water drinking place which I could find with, where I can drink water for free is at Forsyth Park, which is about 10 minutes uh, on the opposite side of where the college is. So when I reach Gulfstream, finally I can get some free water. But when I go to the drinking fountain, I feel disgusted to drink from it because of a couple of problems that we can uh, that we will tackle later. So I decided to change this problem, not only for myself, for the millions of people that have already always been using the drinking fountains. And that's where my design brief lies. It's redesigning drinking fountain and to reduce the consumption of bottled water, change consumers' behaviors around drinking fountain and provide a more reliable and a satisfying experience to consume healthy drinking water. Let's see how I do it. So my agenda for today is to, I already started with welcome and my route. Uh, next step is research and then ideations, followed by mock-ups, testing, models, and the future scope of the project. Starting with research, I researched a variety of websites and blogs and talked to a bunch of people, talked to some design challenges which have already been taking place in the design world for redesigning drinking fountains and asked them personally what outcomes they got out of it. So some of the key insights I found, uh, before we move to the key insights, this is a little history of where it all started. The first drinking fountain ever in the world was launched in London in 1859. It was like a huge fest with like millions of people gathered around just to drink from that single drinking fountain. That's pretty crazy. And then from London, it moved to the US in 1881. New York was the first city that started the drinking fountain, which pretty much looks the same as the initial one, where you have a steel glass attached to a single chain so that people don't steal the glass and you drink water from a single glass. Everybody uh, used the same glass. A million people use the same glass to drink water. That's what people started to realize in 1920. That I, we think there is a need to redesign the drinking fountain. Because guys, it's not very hygienic to drink from the same glass, right? So that's what happened in 1920. From there on, what happened in 1920, 1991? Companies like um, Aquafina, companies like Pepsi and Coca-Cola, they understood this opportunity that we can trick people into buying bottled water. So it's free for us, but they pay for it because people started to dislike the drinking fountain and it was a great opportunity for companies to tap into this untapped market. But we all know that water is a necessity and it's a free resource, so why should we pay for it? So that's the whole motivation behind redesigning the drinking fountain a step further from what today is existing as bottled water and how can we make it more reliable and a more accessible resource for everyone. So let's look at some uh, industry insights. The bottled water in the US is currently increasing like never before. It's almost crossed about 400 billion liters worldwide and more consumption than ever before. And it's outperformed, it's actually outperformed the sales of soft drinks and beverages. So Coca-Cola recently released their um, reports and it mentioned that they sold more Dasani water bottles. Dasani is the brand which Coca-Cola owns that sells bottled uh, water. They sold more bottled water in the last year than they sold Coca-Cola. I mean, that's really ironic that we pay so much for a bottled water and waste so much plastic where it's not even necessary. And also the US consumption of beverages, bottled water ranks highest, which is about one fourth of everything else. It's even above carbonated drinks. I think it's really time for us to change buying bottled water and accessing more free water and 
not pay those uh, multi-millionaire companies to package something which is already free for everyone. So, how do we change for the good and not for the worse? 1859, millions of people gather for a single drinking fountain. 2017, millions of people drink from plastic bottles which are dumped into the waste and do not recycle for the next 500 years. So I think there is a great opportunity for us to tap into this market. Moving on from secondary research, I started with some primary research out of frustration that people just stop using drinking water now, uh, stop using drinking water bottles and start using drinking fountains. So that way we save plastic. And I also started an unsuccessful crowdfunding campaign. Uh, the campaign I did was for um, let's go to the next chapter. So the primary observations with drinking fountains are these primary four problems. First one is you have to actually touch the drinking fountain and that deteriorates the quality over time. Second, it's very dirty when you approach it. It's usually people have already used it so it's water spilling over or they have a lot of residues there. And also it's very difficult to fill uh, bottles for people who carry bottles. And lastly, it's not very ergonomic because you waste about 50 to 60 percent of the water. Most of the people who don't, or maybe like it's not a people problem that they don't know how to drink. It's a design problem that they did not design it well enough for them to not waste water. And so, so while uh, a while ago I was talking about that I started a crowdfunding project. This is what it was for. I wanted to actually buy a full-size water testing kit, which costed about $300. I mean, I could have bought it myself, but I wanted to try crowdfunding, but uh, it didn't go pretty well. So I bought this cheap $30 uh, kit, which tested these 10 different elements. So I tested the water in Gulfstream, and it found that nothing was present, like everything was negative. So everything, all the values that I found were in the limit range of what the government uh, regulates as a safe drinking water. So I think even this is a great motivation for people who buy bottled waters just for the sake that they feel that bottled water is more hygienic, but it's not the case, that's what I wanted to prove here. So, gathering all the primary and secondary research, the final four pain points is, people are unsure if the water is safe to drink, that's why I did the testing. People feel it's unhygienic and unapproachable, that's why I plan to redesign it. Design is not ergonomic, and residues make it look more dirty. So what could the future look like? Let's see. So I started ideating, and these are some of the concepts which I had. Um, I couldn't get into a digital format, but I have all the sketches in my uh, notepad if you would like to have a look at them. So I started to analyze, like, is there a way to make a flat surface where water would flow and people would actually see how clean the water is? Or maybe something which is like a jump so you can actually visualize the water and drink from it. Um, and then I also analyzed some technicalities of the jump of the water as to like at what distance should it fall and how the ergonomic of it should be. And then the final ideas look something like this. So then I start with mock-ups. So the circle is the main idea behind redesigning the fountain. It has an emotional value attached to it that when you look at a circle, the design is somewhat like this, but it's not complete. But your mind feels that the circle is complete because mind has a tendency to complete incomplete objects. So that's the whole concept behind it. And it also feels as if the system is recycling water. So you are not wasting any water, which it actually is recycling. Uh, and the mock-ups for, I made these mock-ups to test the sizes I tested on different people. Uh, so this is supposed to be a video where the water is accepted by the pipe, but this pipe was the same as the source pipe, if, if you get what I'm saying. So this is the source pipe and this is the pipe which accepts water. They both have the same diameter, so water spilled a lot. So then I increased the diameter by say 0.2 or 0.15 inches and that accepted all of the water without saying, wasting a single drop. So that was a huge uh, insight too. And then some more user testing on the sizes and what the distance between the arc should be, at what height the water fountain should be at, and what rotation should it be. And finally, this is my final prototype. 
and I actually have it in the room. Let's have a look. So, so I had a big problem with this design. Uh, firstly, I was not convinced by how I should manufacture it, like for prototype. So then I ultimately 3D printed it. But since we have a long queue in 3D printing last week, uh, they did not put it in the bath for long enough, which left some residues inside the tube. And since there were residues inside the tube, I couldn't fit the actual pipe inside the tube. So then I had to put in the bath the next. So this testing was to test that air is passing through. That means it's not a complete block. So then I put in the bath once again for uh, eight hours, and then uh, it finally turned out to be really good. Some paint job here. And I thought he was trying to blow something into his ear. Oh yeah. It was fun to like talk and listen to the other. Trying to spit oh, in his ear. That's right. Can I just? That's how it works. Drum roll. Uh, 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 but another drum roll. It's got three layers. Double another drum roll. This is what my thing I found on the site. Okay, you have to run water through it now and, when it's not, it. and nothing spills. Let's do it, Scare. What? Can I? Yeah, good. Hold on. Hold on. All right, all right, all right. We're going to take a shower? Or is it going to work? Does it work? Oh, oh yeah. No. So the water that's going here goes back through. So let me explain you the concept behind it. Good. Yes. Yeah. Right? Well, maybe. You cannot. Go. Uh, that's a secret part back there. <laughs> I had like 20 people surrounding this design when I made it last night and like, so can I drink from this bottle? I might put like drinking, actual drinking water inside it uh, for people to actually drink. But let's see how hygienic it is. Let's try. Um, okay, questions, comments? Uh, I have one. Oh, okay. Oh, he's got some. Oh, I'm in the way of the camera, that's why. So finally the way it works would be you are feeling thirsty, so you find a system which is always on, so it's always running. You And it's always running, meaning it's recycling every cycle. And as soon as you approach the drinking fountain, it has a sensor on it, which activates the drainage system. So once you are done drinking, it will drain the water for the next two or three seconds, so it doesn't recycle itself. And after you leave the drinking fountain, it's, it starts recycling again. So that way you save water, it's clean, it's uh, more ergonomic and it's easier to use. And it's more, people told me it's more approachable, it makes you feel like you want to drink water. And then I tested the prototypes. This is the final model. So I have a question for you all to move forward with this project now. So when I initially designed this drinking fountain, it was supposed to be based on a motivation from Ayurveda. Ayurveda suggests that you should drink water sip by sip and not like a glass of water together. So that was my motivation that you put your mouth in and it will send you a sip of water instead of always running. But so like, yeah, like bits of water. Exactly. But uh, when I tested it out yesterday, people suggested me to keep it always running. Because that's more visually appealing and then when I thought about it, it makes more sense because sending a sip of water is very difficult to manage with that design. Like you have to actually aim at the nozzle and the nozzle should put that sip of water into your mouth. So, um, so I had three different ideas on how I can move forward with this. The first one is the sip by sip. Um, second one is always on and the third one is sensor based. So it's similar to what is already existing instead of pushing a button. You have a sensor which you can go near and it starts flowing and then you can put your mouth in there. So the question is preference? Preference? 
I'll be done. The problem, I think the problem with the SIP is you don't quite have a target area yeah. for your mouth. Exactly. You know it's coming out of there, and yeah. you're, you're trying to get <laughs> in the right place, and both pass, and both move. Um, yeah. I was trying to think of a SIP kind of thing that I've seen before, fountains. You ever see a fountain? Those mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, kind of a, a sequence. To me, target would be a problem getting in the right place. Right. Do you guys want to drink water? Hmm? Do you want to drink water from that? Well, it will spill okay. out here. Don't it's like trying to keep you there. Oh, that's okay. Wait, is it through a pipe or is it through the 3D printed parts? <laughs> so my question is, where's the water coming from? Yeah, uh, this one is like the big bucket. <laughs> I, I'm not going to drink because I will spill it. But, uh, I see one issue. Yeah. I think this needs to be a little deeper. Right. Because your forehead. Can you get it? Yeah. Get a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. The height is right, but the depth is not because I couldn't, uh, I didn't 3D print the support that long enough. Yeah. It could be, yeah. Yeah. So okay. water, one tube's coming in here, this right. one is going right. out. Exactly. Cool. And you're just recycling it. So it recycles yeah. every time it's running. And when you approach it, it stops recycling and starts draining. So then like you're draining it. And then it starts so, Ah, okay. <laughs> Once you started drinking, so yeah. it has a sensor on it. So it understands that somebody's drinking the water. So then it drains all of the waste water, and when you stop drinking, it knows that nobody's drinking it now, so it starts okay. recycling. Yeah. So it's continually clean water until, until you drink. Until your face is there, and then Absolutely. your backwash goes to uh, oh. turns to the out. Yeah. And you can like take water and wash it behind or something. Yeah. yeah. I think just visually, <laughs> it's really kind of interesting. The, the whole circle concept that you talked about, I think, is super cool and like intriguing. I mean, it, it kind of, I mean, it's natural. Like, there's a circle and it's connected, and it's like, I think you, I think you nailed that on the head. Yeah. There's a good level of complexity attached to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks as simple as, I mean, it's just a circle, but I think the, I think well, you were able to sneak that in there. The, the challenge is, I, get, I think one thing, if the circle thing's important, maybe that could be a little bigger. Yeah, so how do you almost flare? The, the key is, this works because the water pressure is constant. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can't always count on that. Uh, you can. Depending on, I mean, it's supposed to be within a range, right? Like mm -hmm. commercial yeah. buildings, I mean, maybe this building. I mean, I have used a motor which uh, is used to pump water in fountains, like actual fountains, and they have a pretty consistent. Um, well, I, I guess you could you could existing drinking fountains don't have a pump, right? Don't they just they do water in? They do have a pump. They do. Yeah. Okay. So every time you press the button, oh. the pump activates, and then okay, I was thinking just, just no. water open pressure. the valve, and you got all of them have you a got pump. what you got. Yeah. Okay, so yes, you can control. So what, I mean, have you tried, uh, maybe not, but like, what do you, like, are you able to drink out of it and then the, all of the, the other stuff goes right back into the pipe, or like, it seems like you would want it. So the thing is, uh, for a prototype, I couldn't like, find a pipe thinner than this that might work for this design. So the water is more than what it should be flowing. Okay. So you would have a little bit less water than this, which is almost perfect for you to like drink it from the kitchen. Yeah. Well, then I guess you can fill up your bottle there. Like, can I try to fill up my Yeah, a person tried to fill up a bottle yesterday. It worked. I guess this one, you can feel better that Just it's not going to spill because I have to kind of pull it right back out. Is that not nice? Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I, I think the key is why you're drinking what happens with the water that comes down here. Because it's not, you know, if some of it hits your lips, it's going to kind of kick it. Yeah. I mean, I thought about it a lot. Like, I actually had a design wherein the support would be at exactly horizontally uh, below this, uh, so you would have a sink and stuff. But yeah. I don't want to complicate it. I mean, so what if the water falls down? 
Well, so, it, I mean, it's not going to work. In, put this in our building. Uh, you don't want the water going on the floor. You know, so some type of a tray system where this be you know it's a little bigger. Or, yeah. You know what it could be. I mean, in an outside application, that doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Yeah, outside, but yeah, inside, I think that there's going to be something. Yeah. 